Namaste and welcome back to Morelli's World of Physics. Now in this video I am going to present uh, some physics aspects in an entirely different context from uh, those of my previous videos. I am sure that most of you must be familiar with the game of caroms. But I wonder how many of you would have ever pondered as to what is the physics principles involved in this game? Well, um, I propose to discuss some details about this in this video which forms the part 1 and in the subsequent second part. Uh, in the first part, I will discuss briefly about the game of caroms and the carom board on which this game is played. The game of caroms is supposed to have originated in the South Asian subcontinent, uh, most probably in India. The exact time of origin of this game is not uh, known properly. However, it has been played over the last several centuries and uh, it has even spread to almost all other parts of the globe. Caroms tournaments have been held since the 1980s in several places uh, and uh, the International Caroms Federation that is ICF is the organization which is responsible for holding such world tournaments. This organization was established in Chennai in the year 1988. So now we come to the game of caroms. Carom is a classic board game that is played on a unique board known as the carom board. There are four main components of the game. These are one carom board, then we have 18 numbers of carom men. These are alternatively called coins or pieces. So these are the 18 carom men. Then there is a special piece known as the queen which is red in color. And then finally the, we have the striker whose uh, appearance would be something like this. Now coming to the details of each component. Firstly we take up the carom board. So this is a picture of the carom board. It is the main arena of the game and uh, provides a smooth playing surface upon which the game is played using the other three components. The board is typically square in shape and made of lacquered plywood with a smooth surface. Often it is coated with a glossy finish to reduce the friction. The standard dimensions of the board are 74 by 74 centimeter squared or equivalently 29 by 29 inch squared. Uh, of course other sizes are also available especially uh, for children. Smaller sizes will be provided. Now on all the four sides of the board there are raised borders of width 2 to 4 inches uh, and the border height will be typically about 5 centimeters. Uh, the purpose of this border is to prevent the carom man from jumping out of the board during the gameplay. The actual playing area therefore will be about 27 inches square leaving aside the border. The board is kept horizontally on a stool having a flat and stable surface at a typical height of about 65 to 75 centimeters. For children, maybe this will be less. So this allows the players to have easy access to the board and to reach the playing surface comfortably during the gameplay. At the corners of the board, there are four circular holes which are called pockets. These are provided with netted bags on the lower side. And these are designed to catch the carom coins or carom men that are pocketed during the gameplay. The diameter of the corner pocket is slightly larger than that of the carom coins, typically about 5 centimeters. So this allows them to comfortably pass through the pockets when pocketed, thereby ensuring that they do not easily bounce out during the gameplay. They are also designed so that the coins do not roll back into the board when about to be pocketed. So these are the carom coins or carom men and these are the primary playing pieces used in the game. Typically they are circular discs of diameter 3.2 centimeters made of wood or hard plastic. There are two colors black and white. So each there will be nine in number. The special piece of queen is similar to the carom men but red in color. A crucial and prestigious piece in the game 
Each player will try to pocket the queen and pocketing the queen carries additional point value. Finally the striker, uh, this is the tool with which the game is played. It is made of hard plastic. The top surface may be plain or maybe some design will be there. This is used to propel the carom men in proper directions so that it, they can be pocketed. The striker is also circular with a diameter larger than that of the carom men but less than that of the corner holes. Its lower surface touching the board surface is smooth to reduce friction. The standard diameter of a striker is around 4.1 cm. The striker needs to be heavy enough to strike the carom man with sufficient force but it should not be so heavy as to send him going jumping out of the boat. Often the surface of the boat is sprinkled with fine boric powder. So this will ensure uh, that there is minimum amount of friction between the boat surface on one hand and the striker and the coins on the other hand. Now on all the four sides nearer to the borders there are horizontal lines which are called base lines. These are the base lines. Now these mark the area where players place the striker before taking a shot. So the striker is kept touching the two lines, the base lines. Only the coins above the baseline can be directly hit using the striker during play. The striker should not be directed backward or horizontally from the baseline. There are circles on either side of the baseline. These are the two circles. So these are provided so that the players should not keep the striker for a shot beyond these circles. So some position like this is not allowed. The striker has to be on the baselines. Now between the base lines on adjacent sides of the boat there are diagonal arrow lines pointing towards the respective pockets. So these are the arrow lines which point towards the respective pocket. Uh, what is the purpose of these uh, diagonal arrows? These lines serve as reference for players during the initial setup of the game. They help in positioning the striker and the carom men in the correct starting positions. At the center of the board you can notice that there are two concentric circles. Now the inner one is to accommodate the queen. So at the start of the game the queen will be placed covering this central red circle. And the outer central circle accommodates the other carom men at the start of the game in a particular configuration. Now coming to the actual game of caroms. The game is played either in singles mode with two opponents sitting on opposite sides of the board or in the team mode wherein two teams with two members each play, the members of the same team sitting on opposite sides of the board. The opposing players or teams are assigned carom men of opposite colors, either white or black. The color of the coins is decided by tossing of a coin. The player who wins the toss is assigned the white carom men and he is entitled to start the play. That means he has the first strike. The game composes of successive turns by each player. The first turn for starting the play is for the person or team owning the white men. The objective of the carom is to pocket all of your carom men and the red queen using the striker before your opponent does the same with his coins. Now this is a standard carom board setup and it involves arranging the pieces in a specific configuration at the beginning of each game. So this is a particular configuration in which the carom men and the queen will be positioned at the center of the board. This is that standard configuration and the two players sit on either side of the, sit on opposite sides of the carom board. In his first turn, player 1 who owns the white men places the striker on his baseline. Uh, of course he puts this uh, palm on the board. He aims and strikes it towards the carom men arranged in the center. The objective of the first strike is to break apart the carom men and in the process maybe hopefully to pocket one or more of his carom men. So this is uh, just after the first strike. So the central configuration of the carom men have been broken and uh, the coins now occupy different positions on the surface of the board. So in that breaking process maybe one or two carom men may be pocketed. That depends on some probabilities. Now if the striker succeeds in 
pocketing a white coin, he takes it and keeps it outside the boat. Also, he gets one point in return and is also entitled to continue the play. That means he has one more turn. On the other hand, if no coin is pocketed, the turn automatically passes on to the opponent. If the striker is pocketed at any turn, a penalty is incurred by bringing back into the boat one of the player's coins already pocketed. The process of striking involves placing the fingers properly behind or on the sides of the coin and then pushing. So it is technically called flicking. Pushing or flicking the striker towards the coin that is to be pocketed. Now there are different styles of uh, placing your palm and the fingers uh, on the board to strike the striker. So this is one, one of them. It is known as the long finger or scissors style. You keep your long finger touching the back side of the striker and uh, you take the help of your forefinger to apply the force. So you just uh, push the striker with the long finger and uh, of course after aiming the striker at the coin which is to be pocketed. The second style is middle finger and thumb style. So here you keep the middle finger again uh, behind the striker and uh, you hold that middle finger with your thumb and uh, the thumb aids in applying force on the striker with the middle finger. This is the upright long finger style. So you keep your long finger upright just behind the striker and then you apply force on the striker so that it will be pushed forward towards the caramel. This is the index finger style. Now index finger and thumb style. So you uh, take the help of the thumb also in the process of striking. Then this is the middle finger style. And finally you have the thumb shot. So you keep your thumb behind the striker and uh, take the help of the forefinger also in this process. Each player may develop his own preferred flicking technique based on his playing style, comfort and the specific requirements of the shot they want to make. Also depending on the position of the carom piece which is being aimed at. As I had mentioned earlier, the queen is a very special piece uh, in the game. It can be pocketed only after pocketing at least one piece of the player's color. Also, the pocketing the queen um, awards 5 points to the successful player, provided he follows it up with one coin of his own color. If uh, he is not successful in following it up, then the queen will return to the board at the center. The game will come to an end when all the pieces of one color as well as the queen have been successfully pocketed and only one or more pieces of the opposite color remain on the board. Then the points are added up separately for each player or team and the winner is the one with the maximum number of points. The following animation which gives a quick demonstration of the game of caroms. This is the starting configuration of the game. First we have the breaking shot taken by the player who won the toes and who owns the white pieces. Since no carom men have been pocketed in the breaking shot, the turn passes to the next player who wants the black pieces. The second player takes a direct shot and pockets a black piece. So he keeps the turn and takes one more shot. Here it is not a direct shot but it can be considered as a oblique shot. In its next shot, player 2 attempts an indirect shot and uh, he is once again successful in affecting the piece. Player 2 is successful in his next 3 attempts also. The first one is an oblique shot, the second one is again a direct shot and the third one is something which can be called a rebound shot. The next is an example of what can be called a random shot. The idea is just to rearrange the cameraman on the board so that uh, in the next uh, turn uh, it may be easier to pocket one or more pieces. However, in this particular case, there results the inner door tent pocketing of a white piece. Therefore, naturally, the turn passes on to the player 1. Player 1, in his turn, takes a direct shot to pocket a white piece and continues his turn. Another direct shot and one more white piece pocketed. The play continues like this. In this particular strike, the white pockets the queen and then the queen is followed by another white piece. Again, the play continues until only 
one color of pieces is left on the board. The winner will be the one which has got the maximum number of points. In the present case, white has 13 points as compared to black's 8 points. Therefore, white wins the game. Before concluding this first part of the video on the game of caroms, let me point out major differences with a similar board game, namely billiards. Now this is a billiard board. You can notice that it is rectangular instead of square. And uh, the number of holes is 6 and not 4. So you can see that there are 6 holes on the edges of the rectangular board. Now billiards is played with 16 numbered balls of different colors. The striker in this case is a special white colored ball called cue ball. The cue ball is not hit by the fingers. There is a special long and tapered stick with which the cue ball is hit and this in turn will hit the other balls to pocket them. The player of course holds the stick with both hands. Here I will end this first part of the video on the game of caroms. I will be back soon with the second part giving the physics principles involved in the game. Until then this is Professor Murali Tharavarya signing off from Murali's world of physics. Till we meet again. If you like this video, kindly click on the like button and then share with your friends and relatives and also with your different groups. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, very well up with it, kindly do it now. And please don't forget to click on the bell icon so that uh, you will receive notifications in future. Uh, about my upcoming videos. Goodbye.